Morning. The following is mostly just a mindless rant. I have to get something off my chest. It's something that I've seen several, several times in the past. And when it obviously comes to something that you have a lot of passion for, that's something you really enjoy, it obviously bugs you more. But yeah, sometime late last week, something bugged me. <laughs> I seen a review for episode 10 of Mashoko Tensei Jabba's Reincarnation second season. And it made me angry, and I had to say something about it, but then I got caught up in a lot of things, including the following episodes, review, and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it, it suffice to say, the nutshell of everything here, if you don't want to watch this whole video, is, hey, reviewers, bloggers, opinionated people, newsflash, Mashoko Tensei is not your story. Rudius is not you. Move on. <laughs> I sort of get annoyed whenever I read a review and I see something where it looks as if they're trying to push something. The main point of annoyance is whenever there's a desire in a reviewer or a poster for a story to do what they want it to do. Nothing new for Mashoko Tensei, that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> here recently we had the whole buying of Julie scene. That bugged people because it didn't do something about it. It didn't make a statement. It didn't say, hey, this is wrong. It didn't have Rudius level the whole place. That, that's what bugs them. And they don't care about the rest of the story. They just hate that it doesn't do what they want it to do. Rudy should be upset by this. Rudy should do something about this. And yes, that's the case that we apparently got with episode 10. So let's jump into this post. Let's get into it. The opening paragraph says, when it comes down to it, this episode is about one thing alone. Rudius discovering that he has feelings for Fitz. On one hand, this marks a major milestone for the character. Fitz the first person Rudius has fallen for since he and Edis parted. On the other hand, this whole situation feels like a wasted opportunity for Rudius to learn more about himself and his sexuality. You already know where this is going, right? You already know where this is going, right? Everybody... I don't know, this is kind of one of those things where I guess I should have seen it coming, but at the same time, it's like, oh, we are doing this. So, so we, this is a thing. Okay, gotcha. Jump forward, because this is where it gets juicy. This is where it gets juicy. It is here that we reach the missed opportunity of the episode. For a brief few scenes, Rudius is shown suffering from a heterosexual crisis of sorts. He views himself as not liking men romantically. However, he also admits that he likes Fitz. Instead of confronting this contradiction head on, he looks for an escape. If Fitz is a woman, then it isn't queer in any way. So he starts trying to confirm Fitz's gender, going behind Fitz's back to do so. Then, when Rudius doesn't get the answers he wants, he continues to dodge the obvious conclusion in his mind. But before he's forced to deal with the idea that he might be bisexual, pansexual, etc., he simply lucks into finding out that Fitz is biologically a woman when he falls on top of him and certain parts squish together. Thus, the problem is solved, and Rudius no longer has to deal with the fact that he fell in love with a man, because that man turned out to be a woman in the end. Honestly, it feels like a bit of a cop-out at this point. <laughs> I hate that last line. I, I, think that's the, I think that's the thing that went, I, I can't, I, I, I have to say something. The cop-out point. The cop-out point by this reviewer is literally saying that there is an obligation, there is a responsibility, there is a requirement, there is an obvious thing here that the writer has to address and get into. Rudius has to acknowledge his sexuality. Rudius has to accept that he's bi. Rudius has to address this subject. Instead, because he discovered that Fitz was a woman, eh, it's a cop-out. Eh, they, 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 they avoided something that they were responsible to get into. And that's the problem that we really have here. And this is the problem that, honestly, I run into a lot with a lot of different stories. Yes, mostly it's Mushoku Tensei. <laughs> it happens a lot uh, because Mushoku Tensei, as a story, likes to get into a uh, questionable subject. It likes to get into gray areas, and that bugs people because they want you to be in the extremes. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the fullest point here is the idea that they want you to be in the extremes. These companies want you to be in the extremes. These writers, these reviewers, they all want you to be in the extremes. These posts on Twitter, everybody one side or the other wants you to be in the extremes. You cannot, you cannot just dabble in the middle. You cannot just be in that gray area. 
You have to say something. And if you don't, you're side of the other problem. That's where you are. If you're, if you're in the middle and you want to say anything, you are a part of the problem. That's the main key thing here. And it's that whole long time issue as well with this idea of the never enough. This idea that despite the fact that honestly, in my opinion, in this scene, in this segment of the story, Ruiz is very respectful about the subject. He's not being very vicious about what he might possibly be. He's not saying that, wow, I would hate to be that. I would hate to the idea of having to accept that Fitz is a boy. He's literally accepting it. He is literally to the point now where, and this is a product of what he's been going through for so long, this idea that his unit's not working for so long. He's been in this depression for so long. He's nearly wanted to end his own life. This is a terrible situation that he's in. He is not healthy right now. He is physically and psychologically not healthy right now. Yes, he's finding joy again in the school. He's being, he's being friends. He's getting purpose. He's got a focus. Fitz is a great person. All this stuff is bringing him back out of that, kind of making him forget that he has this issue. But on a regular basis, he is reminded. The anime, unfortunately, doesn't show that. It doesn't get into that. But yes, on a regular basis, Rudy is in his own mind going, crap, if only I could do this. He avoids Cliff and Elise specifically. Chooses to eat somewhere else in the cafeteria. Doesn't like to go over here when they're there. Because it reminds him of what doesn't work about himself. He is still struggling about this. But even in that moment, in this realization, he's not disgusted by the idea of possibly being bi. In his words, I quote, I recognize what all these symptoms meant. Of course, I was in love. I'd fallen for a guy. Assuming he was one, which I wasn't totally convinced of. This seemed like an important question, depending on his gender. I'd have to come to terms with the fact that I may be gay or possibly bisexual. Not that that really mattered in the short term, given that my condition still hadn't improved. I was still kind of hoping he turned out to be a girl though. Again, he's not being anti it. He's not hating the idea that he might possibly become that. He's literally just going, look, I'm a broken person. I acknowledge that the, everybody says this guy and I'm attracted to that guy. So I might actually be like that guy. It's addressing it right there. Your concern of it being a cop out is addressed right there. It's addressed in that episode. He is conflicted and he chooses at that point, I guess that might be a thing, but he wants it to be a girl. In the end, he himself in his mind is convinced I'm straight. So I want this to be a girl. I want that to be the thing. That's not a bad thing. Him being straight isn't a bad thing. I know society, certain groups want that to be a bad thing. The idea that you're straight is a bad thing now, but Rudius, that is his thing. That's what he desires. He desires what Refugian made Rudius desire. Again, this is not your story. It is not going to do what you want it to do. He's not going to suddenly jump into Luke's arms because you think Luke's hot. It's not going to suddenly change things. And that's what I really get frustrated when I see. These reviews that aren't a review for what the substance of the content of the actual thing is, but rather a review of did it say what I wanted to say. That's not how you do a review. You don't review something to say it didn't say this, instead it said this, and thus since it didn't say what I wanted to say, it is now a bad show. No, say did this say cool things, did it do cool things, and then move on with your life. That's the problem that continues to happen with the reviews of Ashoka Tensei is this constant, let's find something to be offended about. And that's why I joked about in my recent video with episode 11. I am absolutely curious if groups like this, when they see that Silphy went out there and essentially under duress, forced Rudius to strip her down, which if it was a male character, forcing a female character under duress to strip them down, this company and many other groups would probably be completely outraged. But no, we're selective. We're selective about this crap and we want to make outrage about the stupidest thing. I'm getting into much more of a rant than I actually intended to get into, but oh, it's just, it never ends. And I don't know why I keep falling into it. It, I have this weird thing that every now and then when I need a good laugh, I will look for reviews from companies like this. I'll go on there. I'll search for a show that I just watched and I'll see what they say about it just to see what dumb thing they get upset about. And it's always hilarious. I just have to avoid the Mashoko ones, apparently. Uh, but it is, a, for what I do, important. I need to know what certain groups want to peg on to Mashoko so that I'm ready to make arguments against it. That's really what it turns into. And, it, and it's an arguments that I don't want to get into, but at the same time, I need to be ready for it when it does come. 
Because again, these people will always see the worst in everything. You wonder why the hell they're actually watching it, and you know the exact answer. They need somebody to write about the show because it gets clicks. And the best way to get clicks is just to write the most stupidest thing in there and make your stinger paragraph how you're outraged that it did something wrong. And it just, it never gets old. It just, it never, it's an endless supply of content. And I could, I could totally make my entire channel just nothing but reading annoying posts about certain shows, but I don't want to really turn into that kind of a channel. <laughs> I'll limit myself. I don't want to turn into a negative Nancy channel. As much as most of the time people are kind of in agreement with what I say, and it's great, I love that support, but I don't want that to be my content. But these people just kind of, it's, it's almost like it's easy to become a reverse for this kind of crap because they're, the other side's doing it. But anyways, that that's what I wanted to rant about. I mean, I can get in a whole discussion here about whether what I thought Rudius is he. I, I don't know. Again, he's not my character. Um, there's something, it, it, could, it could turn into something later on. It could be swinging both ways. Who knows? Again, in, this, in, in the end, for this brief moment, Rudius was accepting it. Not that it was what he was going to end up doing. He still chose that this is the thing that I want more. And that's what was important to him. That was his sexuality. So anyways, that's that's all I'm going to get into. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what you think of this whole situation. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. I do coverage of Mashoka Tensei anime every Sunday when it airs. I do a full breakdown of what content they may have skipped and my thoughts on the episode overall without getting into spoilers post the anime. Additionally, every Monday I have Mashuko Monday where I do an analysis of the novel itself, which currently I'm pretty much a volume beyond the second season's current second part end. So view that with your own discretion. Um, but with all that said, I thank you all for watching. If you like this content, you want to support more, I have Patreon link, tips link, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate everybody does. And you all take care.